I can honestly say that the team is more or less a family. It's more, those, those are my brothers. My name is Les Williston, I'm chucked off Broken Bow, Oklahoma. I've been here with Team Tuscahoma since its inception. Team Tuscahoma is our, is our uh, team that comprises uh, all of Choctaw Nation and uh, Choctaws and a few other tribal peoples from other places. The history of Choctaw stickball goes way back. Long, long time ago, back in the ancient times, we lived in a deep south. In a deep south, there were many other tribes living all around us, scattered all down to the south. The territories were permanent, the villages were permanent. We lived in our own areas. Each village had its own hierarchy, peace chiefs, war chiefs, councils. One major part of the southeastern culture is the heads of the clans who were in charge of what went on around the village. And the heads of the clans were the uh, grandmothers. So to go to war it was, a, it was a decision that wasn't made lightly. In order to go to war, War chiefs had to get the blessing from the clan mothers because it's their grandbabies you're taking to war. According to at least one Cheta oral tradition, stickball was created by a Cheta man named Moshalika. Stickball, which is known as Ishtabuli or Kapucha, was devised as a way to settle disputes. As life is precious and a blessing from the creator, all out war could be avoided. Even in modern times with modern rules, the game is rough. To put this in perspective, in the past, no rules existed. The only understanding was that the ball was not to be touched by a player's hand. In modern stickball, rules about blocking and tackling have been added to protect the players. Stickball is played with no padding or helmets. Broken bones and other injuries still happen. Ishtaboli is known as the little brother of war for great reason. Sometimes there were hundreds of ball players out there playing on the field. And there's some reports of uh, some goal posts being five miles apart with hundreds of ball players. The points was decided upon where they, when they reach a certain point, that was uh, the end of the game. The decision was final. And since everybody got together over the course of several councils, got together and set the parameters, uh, they all would abide by it. That's the way they handled uh, a lot of the disputes down in the southeast. And that is also why they call it Little Brother of War. Because instead of going to battle, we played ball. That's another good way a young native boy would uh, distinguish himself as a warrior, as being an excellent ball player. They would strive to be the best, best ball player out there. In modern stickball, the field is about the size of a football field with poles planted on each end of the field. The ball or toa can be advanced up and down the field by throwing or running. In tournament play, a roster can have up to 100 plus players, but only 60 players on the field for a game. That then divides up into 30 on 30, covering the football size field in three positional zones, defense, center, and shooter. The 30 players are usually positioned on the field according to areas of emphasis. Roster depth is a key ingredient to winning in modern day stickball. That is why so many players build a team. Points can be scored by hitting the pole with the ball, either by throwing or running the ball. It does not matter what fashion you achieve a score, it will be worth one point. The game lasts four quarters. If the teams are tied at the end of play, the game will be extended into overtime. A quarter of stickball lasts 12 minutes, with a three minute break at the end of the quarter, then a five minute halftime to give players time to get water and switch ends of the field. The only time there is a break is when a player has been injured and needs assistance off the field. Medic! Medic on the field! Medic! Medic! In order to begin learning or playing check to stickball, you will need the sticks. Handmade by a stick maker to the player's specifications, the sticks and the stick maker are a vital part to the game. Handmade capucha or sticks are vital to the chata game of stickball. Usually made from hickory, the sticks are crafted to fit the left and right hands. 
The cups are formed at the end to throw, catch, and cradle the ball. The player uses the sticks to advance the ball up and down the field to score points. Chata sticks are distinctive by their look, feel, and even down to the leather lacing. Without stick makers, the game would more than likely cease to exist. If someone was wanting to make their own sticks, like a traditional way by hand, um, this is how I would show your main supply or your materials, your crucial materials. What we're trying to do is visualize this going into a quarter, and we want to take those half those quarters into what is that eighth or sixteenth? And basically, what we're looking at is kind of an inch thickness of diameter. I just think you know it, it's very important to keep learning how to or to keep the tradition of you know making sticks by hand because now we have so many people that make them they can mass produce them by machine so you're you're losing you know the actual identity even though you're trying to keep identity with you know by playing the actual handcraftness or craftiness and style of doing it by hand is just so much more um, in depth of how you feel about the sticks and the game itself. The way it is going today with the vast amount of sports you can play in, in school, in high school, you know, you get football, you get basketball and everything else, but it, it's hard to keep up with a traditional game. And I think they feel more of a sense of being belonging to something because everybody that plays, they just really enjoy it. It ain't so much of the hurting and the hitting, it's more of, you know, it's something that's theirs, you know, that they've always had instilled in them. You could ask any of these kids that take Choctaw language class in the schools that offer it, and you ask them what they like most about their culture, and the first thing they'll say is stickball. I encourage people to learn to make sticks, you know. Uh, you gotta, sometimes you can learn by watching people or try it out for yourself, because you know, we need, we need just as much stick makers as we do stickball players. It's artwork, I guess, you know. There's a sense of pride when you do make them. So we, we uh, compliment each other, you know, on our craftsmanship, because that's what it is, you know, it's a skill. You know, whenever I make it, you know, I just think about, you know, my dad teaching me, then how much we've grown from then to there, then how much I, you know, reminisce or I would think, you know, what they did in the past. You have that connection to your root or to your ancestors, is that they started at one journey, part of the journey, but now we're here, but we're still going on. And so it's just very, you know, humbling. It, it really is. It just, that's, I keep that with me all the time to, and I think, you know, to be a more makers than just us here today. You know, even though this is a family tradition, we know we need to have more tradition of the community, the people itself. It's a great feeling, you know, it's God sent or, you know, whatever you feel, it's your spirituality that goes with it. Just something that comes from the earth or something that's from nature. And you look at, you know, this tree and that's it. I mean, that's a tree. But whenever you split it and do all this hard work, you actually sculpt it and make it into something that's used, utilized or used for a different purpose. And it's just, you know, almost like making something out of nothing. And that's, you know, the best gift too. I play stickball because it, uh, it connects me with my culture. I think it's important. It's always been an important game all through our history. You know, at first it was there to settle disputes. Then it moved to more of just um, kind of like a social, you know, game to keep the community together. But then now we've converted it to a sport and it's, uh, it's a hardcore sport. We still play it with the same vigor and passion that we've done in the past. It's important to our culture and it's important to our identity as who we are as Choctaw people. It's different because now it's just a competition. Uh, it does keep the tradition alive, and at the core, you know, you still don't want to lose. You still want to win. You still want to have that pride to say, we beat you, we're better than you. Getting that point when your team and the other team are tied up and you're desperately trying to get that final point 
And then when you finally get that final point, everyone cheers. And that just, that's one of the good moments of stickball. Working hard, trying to finally get that point. And it just proves that if you work hard enough, you'll work succeed. Along with that is, you know, respect for tradition, respect for your other players. There's a lot of, a lot of things happen on the stickball field and adults, full contact. But after the game's over, everything, everybody knows it's just a competition and you're out there trying to win. Again, it's, you know, being part of a team, stuff like that. Uh, keeping the tradition alive, getting a chance to show a little bit of culture, teach a little bit of culture, a little bit of history. I like doing it because when I was a kid, it was, we did it all the time, but it was on the weekends. You go back to school on Monday, you don't talk about it. Now it gives them a chance to openly talk about it or express their culture or have other kids ask about their culture. They don't have to be ashamed of it. They don't have to hide it. It gives them that opportunity to talk about it. I've always played sports my entire life. So, you know, stepping on the court, uh, baseball diamond, football field, uh, each one of us have our own ways of getting in tune with the game. The game of stickball is, is a whole lot different than any other sport especially coming down to here, to what we call homeland. Here, we play this game not for anything else, but the, the honor in it is, is so, so overwhelming. You know, most, most of us play for so much more than just ourselves. I mean, the team, you know, you represent Choctaw Nation, you represent Tushkahoma. When I step on that field, to me, it goes beyond that. Uh, but stepping on the field here is a lot different because this is closer to where we, where we originally come from. So it's, it's, a, it's a different feeling. Before the game, you know, you might be friends with other teammates on the opposing team, whatever. But when it comes to stickball and you step on that field and the only people that matter the most are the people that's standing next to you. And it's a, that's what's called little brother of war. Being on the field is uh, pretty intense. I mean, I don't know how to describe it. It's just one of those things that you can do like skydiving or something. You, you never really don't know how to do it until you're actually out there. Playing this game, it's, um, like it's, it's a little bit different here in Mississippi than it is in Oklahoma. But when you're on the field, win or lose, you know that you're doing what you need to be doing for Choctaw people. I don't know, it's just, it's, it's intense. It's, it's kind of like a, a moment to yourself right before the game starts. You walk on the field, there's a lot of cheering, you get your lineup and you run to your position and right before the ball is first thrown up, there's just this moment that everything goes still, everything goes quiet. And you have that moment to reflect in yourself and then it's just like a car crash. That ball goes up and the intensity hits and it doesn't stop until you get back to, until, until the game's over. In 1899, Horatio Cushman predicted that the game of Chetta Stickball would be dead. Although its future may have looked in doubt at times, he was very wrong. The ancient, passionate game is rapidly growing in its resurgence in various Chetta communities, both in Oklahoma and Mississippi. Even smaller Chetta communities throughout the U.S. are picking up the game and getting involved in this active cultural preservation. It looks as if the game will battle for its territory and time for generations to come, always reminding everyone Ishtaboli is the little brother of war. I guess respect and uh, pride is always there. Culture and heritage, everything. Every, everything that you can learn about your culture is the greatest thing you can do for yourself. It's your identity.